Did you ever find out which one of the O'Brien boys was it? Who snapped the toy pistol against my hand? There, when the flags were red and white in the breeze, and Bucky Estill was firing the cannon brought to Spoon River from Vicksburg by Captain Harris, and the lemonade stands were running, and the band was playing to have it all spoiled by a piece of a cap shot under the skin of my hand, and all the boys all crowded around me saying, You'll die of lockjaw, Charlie, sure. Oh dear, oh dear. Which chum of mine could have done it? Over and over they used to ask me, while buying the wine or the beer, in Peoria first, and later in Chicago, Denver, Frisco, New York, wherever I lived, how I happened to lead the life and what was the start of it. Well, I told them, a silk dress and a promise of marriage from a rich man, it was Lucius Atherton, but that was not really it at all. Suppose the boy steals an apple from the tray at the grocery store, and they all begin to call him a thief. The editor, minister, judge, and all the people. A thief, a thief, a thief, wherever he goes. And he can't get work, and he can't get bread without stealing it. Why? The boy will steal. It's the way people regard the theft of the apple that makes the boy what he is. Well, don't you see this was the way of it? We bought the farm with what he inherited. Poisoning his father's mind against the rest of them. And we never had any peace with our treasure. The marine took the cattle and the crops filled, and lightning struck the granary. So we mortgaged the farm to keep going, and he grew silent and was worried all the time. Then some of the neighbors refused to speak to us and took sides with his brothers and sisters, and I had no place to turn, as one may say to himself at an earlier time in life, no matter if so-and-so is my friend, or I can shake this off with a little trip to dig a tour. Then that dreadful smell infested the rooms, so I set fire to the beds, and the old witch house went up in roar of flame. As I danced in the yard with waving arms, while he wept like a freezing steer. If you in the village think that Myrick was a good one, who closed the saloons and stopped all playing at cards, and hailed old Daisy Fraser before Justice Arnett and many a crusade to purge the people of sin. Why do you let the milliner's daughter, Dora, and the worthless son of Benjamin Pantier nightly make my grave their unholy pillow? I preached 4,000 sermons. I conducted 40 revivals and baptized many converts. Yet no deed of mine shines brighter in the memory of the world, and none is treasured more by me. Look how I saved the blisses from divorce, and kept the children free from that disgrace, to grow up into moral men and women, happy themselves, a credit to the village. Earth keeps vibrations going, they're in your heart. And that is you. And if people find you can fiddle, why fiddle you must, for all your life. What do you see? A harvest of clover? Or a meadow to walk through to the river? The winds and the corn, you rub your hands. For beeves hereafter ready for market. Or else you hear the rustle of skirts, like the girls when dancing at Little Grove. To Cooney Potter, a pillar of dust. Or whirling leaves met ruinous drip. They look to me like redhead Sammy, stepping it off to tour lure. How could I tell my 40 acres not to speak of getting more, with a medley of horns, bassoons, and piccolos stirred in my brain by crows and robins? And the creak of a windmill, only these? And I never started to plow in my life that someone did not stop in the road and take me away to a dance or picnic. I ended up with 40 acres. I ended up with a broken fiddle and a broken laugh and a thousand memories, and not a single regret. Mr. Kessler, you know, was in the army, and he drew six dollars a month as a pension, and he stood in the corner talking politics, or sat at home reading Grant's memoirs. And I supported the family by washing, learning the secrets of all the people, from their curtains, counterpaints, shirts and skirts, for the things that are new grow old at length, they're replaced with better, or none at all.
people are prospering or falling back, and rents and patches widen with time. No thread or needle can paste decay, and there are stains that baffle soap, and there are colors that run in spite of you, blame though you are for spoiling a dress. Handkerchiefs, nappery, they have their secrets, the laundress, life, knows all about it. And I, who went to all the funerals held in Spoon River, swear I never saw a dead face without thinking it looked like something washed and ironed.